Lately, there have been a lot of discussions about hell. And, and it's been good because it's caused me to re-study what I've always believed about hell. And, and it's interesting because some of the things that I thought were so clear, they're really not that clear in Scripture. And then there's other truths that I thought were, you know, questionable. And yet the more I study, I go, wow, that's actually crystal clear. But the one thing that's definitely come out of this study of this topic is, wow, it's been so humbling and so sobering. I mean, I, I know that I've, I've struggled with uh, pride my whole life, but God's kind of revealed it to a completely different level. I, I mean, the other day, the image came to my mind of Romans 9, where God compares me to a piece of clay. And he says, you're, you're like a piece of clay and I'm the potter. And so just that, I thought, wow. That means I'm like a piece of clay trying to explain to other pieces of clay what the potter is like. Think about that for a second. It shows the silliness for any of us to think that we're an expert on him. Our only hope is that he would reveal to us what he is like and then we can just repeat those things. And in and, and Psalm 25, verse 9, he talks about how he explains his way to those who are humble. And so I'm going, hey, God, I want to be humble then because i got to know the truth about you. Humble me. Show me the pride in my life. See, and that, that's why I've been, I've been concerned as I've listened to some of the discussion about hell and, I, and read some of these things that are written because I'm going, the tone in which we use. I mean, we got to be careful here. We have to guard ourselves against, first of all, heartlessness. I mean, do you understand what we're talking about? We're talking about real people here. We can't just have these theological discussions about a doctrine when we're, we're talking about people's eternal destinies here at the same time. And, and then I think about the carelessness we, we can't be careless in this discussion. We can't just argue for our point of view or what we think is right, and so we present our case and we neglect all the other evidence. Man, do, do you understand what we're dealing with here? Man, we gotta lay everything on the table and go, look, it's your destiny at stake, so I wanna just present all of the facts, everything I can think of in this book, and let you decide, not sway you. Just go, look, here's everything I see we got to make a decision about this. And, and then, maybe the, the thing I'm most concerned about is, is this arrogance. Look, in Isaiah 55, God says, Your thoughts are not like my thoughts, and your ways are not as my ways. He goes, as high as the heavens are above the earth, that's, that's how much higher my ways are than your ways. And that's how much higher my thoughts are than your thoughts. So when we begin an argument with, well, I wouldn't believe in a God who would, who would what? Do something that you wouldn't do? Or think in a way that's different from the way you think? Do you ever even consider the possibility that maybe the Creator's sense of justice is actually more developed than yours? And that maybe His love and His mercy are perfect and that you could be the one that is flawed? See, when we make statements like, well, God wouldn't do this, would He? Do you understand at that moment, you're actually putting God's actions in submission to your reasoning. You're in essence saying, well, God wouldn't think that way or act that way because I wouldn't act that way or think that way. And yet, if when I read the scriptures, man, all through this book, I go, God, there are some things you say that I would never say. There are things you do that I wouldn't think to do. I mean, even from creation, I go, so Adam and Eve sinned and, 
And so you're going to put a curse on the earth? See, I wouldn't think to do that. And then there's other passages that are even more difficult for me to stomach, like Exodus 32, where the people sin and God tells his priests, here's what I want you to do. I want you each to grab a sword, strap it to your side, and then I want you to run back and forth. And I want you to just start killing people. Some of them will be your brothers, your friends, because of this sin. And I'm reading that and 3,000 people dying going, wow, did you just do that? Or to think about the story of Job and go, really, God? It, it seemed like he was one of, if not the most faithful man on earth, and you're going to have his family die? You're going to have all of his possessions take away? You're going to have him? You're going to let him be struck with these sores all over his body and suffering? And then I get to the cross, and I go, Really, God? These people have acted so wickedly. And so your response is going to be, I'll have my son, my perfect son, my only son, my beloved son, humble himself and take the form of one of these human beings. And I'm going to let these other human beings torture him, spit on him, nail him to a cross, and then you're going to have him pay for the crimes of everyone else? I go, I would never have thought to do that. And then, then, then you get to the end and, 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 and Revelation 20, how the story ends. And I go, God, you're going to do that to one of your created beings where he takes the devil. In, in Revelation 20, verse 10, it says the devil, this is God's creation, who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I read that, I go, really? Tormented day and night forever and ever? And then in verse 15, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Look, there are a lot of things in this book that I go, wow, God, you did that. You thought that. I wouldn't think that and I wouldn't have done that. But when I come to those passages and when you come to those passages, does it even enter your mind? that maybe he knows something that you don't? Or is it always, I have this ability to reason and I have this level of morality and so something in him must be off here or I won't believe in him. Right now I'm writing a book. It's about hell. It's about one of those things where I think I, I miss God on it in some ways. And I don't want to belittle him. I don't want to draw conclusions that are not true. And that's why I'm asking you to pray for me because I know there are things that I want desperately to be true. And I also know that, that, that there's a, a part of me that thinks God ought to do things a certain way. And I don't want to put him under me. I, I want to be honest and say, look, here's all that God has written. I don't want to draw any conclusions that, that aren't there. I don't want to read into it too much. I just want to present this fairly, and I don't want to misrepresent him. And I want to encourage you, as you discuss this, it's good that you discuss these things. But I'm asking you, do it with humility. Confess. Pray fast and study diligently on this one because we can't afford to be wrong on this issue.